Whether you need a luggage attachment strap, tie-downs, do-it-yourself face mask supplies, or a colorful promotional product, we've got you covered at Strapworks. Strapworks, the worldwide leader in straps. Click the link in the show notes and check out their amazing list of products. America's number one source for news with Tom Novak. We have breaking news at this hour. A report has been published in the New America Science Journal from a Dr. Liverpool where he states, and I quote, The Earth's electromagnetic field, which provides great protection from the harmful cosmic particles emitted by the sun and other sources in space, is about to become unstable due to an imminent polar shift, end quote. This report has sent the science community into a frenzy, especially those with a deep understanding of the ramifications of a complete polar shift. We have Dr. Liverpool on live video feed from his research laboratory in Berkeley, California. Dr. Liverpool, thank you for making yourself available to us. We know every second of your day is valuable, especially in these times. Can you explain to the American public around the world what a complete polar shift means for our viewers watching at home right now? Tom, a polar shift will have a devastating effect on our power grids, first and foremost. So people should expect large areas to experience prolonged power outages. Our means of communication will also be hit hard by this shift. Why would a polar shift disrupt communication, though? From what I understand, a polar shift means that the South Pole will become the North Pole and vice versa. Wouldn't navigation devices dependent on satellite positioning simply work upside down? It's much more complicated than that, and actually more frightening. First, the new pole positions have to settle, so the existing electromagnetic field that surrounds the Earth will become unstable and largely dissipate until the poles settle in again. In the meantime, the Earth will have an erratic electromagnetic field that is not uniform and reduced in size. What will happen is the satellites in orbit will no longer be protected by the electromagnetic field. So the cosmic particles that once bounced off and were redirected into space will now directly impact them. So essentially, our satellites will become sitting ducks for cosmic particles. That is as simple as anyone can put it. Does this mean the rest of the Earth will also be exposed to these cosmic particles? And the second part of this question is, will the cosmic particles dissipate the layer of soot that is currently blackening the sky? Indeed it will, but Tom, when the sky is clear, large portions of lands and sea will be scorched by these same cosmic particles. People need to prepare to go underground or find suitable shelter because without the electromagnetic field to shield us from the cosmic particles of the sun, the devastation will be astronomical. New Kingdom Radio Theater. If you're a podcast junkie, you might be thinking about doing a show of your own. I can tell you this audio drama started out just as an idea while listening to other podcasts. And starting it was the best decision I ever made. But it can feel overwhelming if you don't know where to begin. That's why I got to tell you about Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout is by far the easiest and best way to launch a professional podcast. Buzzsprout will get you onto every major podcast platform like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and more. You also get an awesome podcast website. There is so much Buzzsprout has to offer. Start your own podcast with Buzzsprout and get a $20 Amazon gift card. Just follow the link in the show notes. This way Buzzsprout will know that I and all of us here at the New Kingdom Radio Theater sent you. And you'll be supporting our show. Buzzsprout, the easiest and best way to start a podcast.
As the poles began to shift, strange and catastrophic events began occurring. The repositioning of the poles caused humans to become vulnerable to energetic particles from the sun and cosmic rays. Genetic mutations began to occur, causing major deformations in babies. The cancer rate also spiked dramatically. There were massive earthquakes, volcano eruptions, tsunamis, and subsequently, flooding of epic proportions. Large areas of land swallowed up by the sea and became submerged. Seabeds rose up and created new islands as well. The familiar coastlines of countries and continents changed. But most intriguing of all was the sudden melting of the ice in Antarctica. Many believed the fabled land of Atlantis had become exposed. Large ancient pyramids and city ruins preserved in time under a sea of ice were revealed. The world was shocked by the realization that ancient civilizations indeed had been much more technologically advanced than anyone had ever imagined. Lord Oreb, are these reports accurate? A technologically advanced civilization preserved under the Antarctic ice? How advanced are we talking about? Much more than we previously thought. The ruins archaeologists have studied for centuries on land were but limited shells of what the ancient peoples really had in their possessions, in terms of technology. Our scientists believe the Antarctic civilization had mastered electricity and even their own conversion of computers. <laughs> what? Computers? How? Well, sir. We think they're computers, but the scientists haven't figured out how they work yet. They know they used electricity as a power source. With what we found so far, it is quite evident the ancients have an understanding of complex math, and apparently an obsession with dynamical systems. But honestly, there hasn't been a lot of time to crack their codes. Of course. We have other pressing matters. Sir, these findings have the potential to be incredibly resourceful. It is rather unfortunate that we cannot devote more time to wrap our heads around what the ancients were doing with all these technologies, their purpose and whatnot. How do you figure they could be of any use to us now? They could reveal how the ancients lived, what they dealt with on a daily basis, and most importantly, what the world was like up until the point they perished into an icy oblivion. From what we gather, these people were frozen alive, and their whole world, their way of living, everything, is just as it was the day everything ended for them. Don't you think finding out how and why that happened to them would be of some use to us now, in these times? Sir, there is so much we could learn from them and apply that knowledge to help us navigate through the times we are experiencing now, as a species. I see your point. But it isn't necessary to navigate anything, Jeremy. We already know what we have to do. Things are happening as they should, exactly as it is supposed to. The ancients met their fate because that's how it was meant for them. Our fate will be what is meant for us. Aren't you just a little bit curious? No, but it seems you, and I suppose many others in the science community are. So assemble your team to piece together what happened to those ancient people. But I need you to head up other things in the kingdom. We have more important work to do. <sighs> and speaking of scientists, have you gotten an update from Dr. Liverpool yet? As soon as our meeting concludes, I will go over his latest report. Then get to it, and notify me if there is anything important I should know. Dismissed. Much of a choice anyway. 
It's just me, baby. What's wrong? Is everything okay with the baby? Yes, everything's fine. I just can't find a comfortable position no matter which way I shift my body. Huh? How did you get past the guards? Oh, yeah. I'm a resourceful man. You know that. Nothing can stop me from seeing my baby girl and soon-to-be grandson. I mean, unless it's a granddaughter. I'm fine with either. <laughs> it's a boy. Don't worry. It seems like everyone insists this baby be a boy. So the universe is granting everybody's wish. Mm. Well, your belly is getting pretty big now. So it won't be long. Have you and Jacob picked a name yet? I want to name him Malcolm, but you know that's going to stir up so much drama in this family. God, I can't believe I'm in this mess. The king won't let me name his grandson Malcolm, so there's no point fighting it. What's in a name anyway? Another tremor. They're becoming more frequent. That can't be a good thing. The whole world is going to hell. King of Silas will see to it that everything is completely destroyed. What a crappy world I'm bringing this child into. Don't say that. You know, the one thing King of Silas doesn't know is just how powerful I am now. He remembers me as just a strong soldier. I admit I admired him. I used to think we were brothers. But he went against his brothers. He went against all his people. And he will have to pay for that in the worst way. <laughs> I've heard stories about you and Asylus from the war and even before that, but do you remember what you used to call me when I was a little girl? I called you many things, sweetheart. I always loved just seeing you when I got home. Yeah, you called me many things, but sweetheart wasn't one of them. Can you recall which name I loved most? Yeah, baby. Listen, I have to run now. You know, sooner or later, the guards are going to know I'm in here. And that'll be bad for the both of us. What did you call me, Dad? I mean, if you really are my dad. I called you my little princess. And here you are. A real princess. No, that's not it. And you're not my real father. Huh. Now I wish to be alone. Please, leave now. Look, baby girl, this condition is clouding your judgment. I'm going to come back in a few days. When I do, I suggest you come with me. Right now. I have to make sure you'll have safe passage because we'll have a long journey ahead of us. Why should I go anywhere with you? I don't know who you really are. For all intents and purposes, I am your father. And I'm the only hope you have right now of staying alive. Because I'll tell you something. King of Silas will execute you as soon as the baby is born. So if you want to have any time with your child, I'm the only chance you have of getting it. Besides, the pole shift has made the world a much more dangerous and confusing place. Navigation systems are malfunctioning and communications are failing. We can take advantage of the situation. We'll be impossible to track. The lack of good satellite technology has plunged much of the world into barbarism, and the Silas is continuously losing grip and control as the leader of the world. You know I'm right. At least, think about it. Okay, fine. I'll think about it. In California, earthquakes were tearing apart the once great state. In 
in spite of the damage being sustained by people all across the region of the southwest of the original states, the young couple, Cody and JJ, continued planning their wedding. Their determination made members of the Bohemian Ranch marvel at their constant efforts and attention to detail. It was both an exciting and terrifying time for everyone there at the ranch. Back at the research lab, Dr. Liverpool was trying in vain to find a way to reverse the pole shift. He knew this was an impossible task. So, he completed all the tests and experiments to prove it's an impossibility to both Lord Orip and King Osiris. It was an ironic parallel of stories, as both Liverpool and the amorous young couple knew in their hearts all the efforts would be for naught. Last big quake sank parts of San Diego. The news is reporting chunks of the coast are submerged. I know we're well inland, but these quakes are starting to make me nervous. You sure you folks want to want to go out and travel out here now with all this craziness happening? Yes. I know it's dangerous. All my family who said they'll come to the wedding understand the risks. They think it would be a great distraction from all the doom and gloom around the world. <coughs> Roger, you and everyone here at the ranch have been very gracious. We're very thankful to y'all for letting us in. You really didn't have to. Uh, are you having second thoughts about hosting our wedding, sir? Oh, no. that That's not what I'm getting at. I, I just don't want you two to be disappointed if people don't show up. I mean, it's ri- it's really dangerous to be traveling anywhere right now. Heck, my sister, who lives in Sacramento, told me she got lost just trying to get to a sick friend across town. With GPS all screwed up, people can't find anything. Wait! Hey, what's that? Another trimmer. A little big one. Faith, come over here. Hey, over here, Cody, come, look at this. Oh, my God. Why? This isn't happening, Cody. Tell me this isn't happening. I'm sorry, babe. The ground just opened up and swallowed our natural altar. The entire area where our wedding would have been was swallowed up. Look at the size of the hole in the ground. Damn. That is one massive hole. I am so sorry, JJ and Cody. Dudes, it just wasn't in the cards for you here. (laughs) Why is this happening? We must be cursed. (sighs) We're not cursed, babe. We'll just have to move on and find another place for our wedding. Just stay here and wait Even lies need a little time to 
Please tell me you have an idea of how we can reverse the pole shift. With all due respect, Lord Oreb, you realize that this is an impossible task that you are asking me to do. Nothing is impossible, Dr. Liverpool. Nothing. Well then, I believe humankind is simply not capable of accomplishing what you ask. We don't have the technology nor the understanding of inner workings of pole shifts to even begin to tackle this problem, which may actually not be a problem at all, if you think about it. What on earth do you mean? The planet has experienced multiple pole shifts in its history. We know this from geological evidence, and life on Earth has survived each time. The planet sometimes needs to reset itself. That's all this is. Reset itself? Are you insane? Man is the steward of Earth. We are the curators of everything that happens here and all world business. We own this world. And if the pole shift would throw us down into chaos, then we have to undo what nature wants to reset. Nature cannot be negotiated with. It cannot be dominated either. The pole shift is the planet's way of fixing itself. It's a healthy process. Ah, oh, Lord Oreb, you are a very intelligent man, and you know in your heart the Earth has managed very well without man's interventions. Nature does not take orders from humans. Well, I'm afraid mankind will suffer an unimaginable fate as part of that natural process. I dare say this debate is getting us nowhere. <coughs> there is something else we need to discuss. satellites. Ah yes, the satellites. Here. Take a look at these images. Chinese satellites have been re-entering the Earth's atmosphere within the last 12 hours. Why should I care about the Chinese satellites? Because their satellites were the furthest from the Earth's surface and they are already crashing and disintegrating as they re-enter. It's only a matter of time before the secret space force space station begins to malfunction and tumble back down to Earth. And since it is practically indestructible, people will come across it and... And it will be a disaster of epic proportions. Sir. Why is it the Space Force Station won't fully disintegrate when all other satellites burn up? 
because it is largely made up from extraterrestrial material. Then perhaps you should find a way to blow them up before they re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. Well, that might work, however. If we disintegrate them before they reach the surface, they could break apart into hundreds of smaller pieces, and that's a scenario we never want to have to deal with. It would not just be a catastrophe, it would be the most heinous nightmare ever unleashed on the Earth. The Rise of King Asylus, Episode 50, Paul's Shift, starring J.V. Torres as King Asylus, Amanda Haggis as J.J., Austin Beach as Cody Valentine, L.A. Bonet as Princess Monica, Steve Fisher as Lord Jeremy Oreb, Gary Scales as Malcolm Banks, Mark Dreisenstock as Dr. Liverpool. Don Rudinsky as newsreader Tom Novak. John Berghart as Roger. And narrated by Sergei Beriznikov. This episode features the songs Miles Away by Matrice Marcus. Download the music on Bandcamp.com today. And Raven's Wings by Steve Fisher. For more information about the cast, the music, or this production, please visit us at www.theriseofkingasilas.com for a full list on our Season 4 episode page. And now a word from our podcast friends. The name's Johnny. Johnny. Jonathan. Johnny. I have... a demon. (laughs) And his name is hard to pronounce, so I'll just call him Vet. I am not a very smart man. You are so stupid. But I didn't think things would get this bad. A three-alarm fire. Tragedy has struck our community. Blame the lime. Man, oh man, was I wrong. Stay tuned for me, my demon, and I. This has been a production of the New Kingdom Radio Theatre in Baltimore, Maryland. Copyright 2020. And stay tuned for episode 51. <laughs>